She's been quite a brave politician in some ways. Remember when she was party chairman, uh, she warned the party that it was known as the nasty party. Uh, but uh, on balance, she's not been that successful. And some breaking political news this morning. Former Prime Minister Theresa May has announced she'll stand down as an MP at the next election. In a statement, she says she's taken the difficult decision to quit her maidenhead seat after 27 years in the Commons. Sir David Liddington was effectively Theresa May's deputy Prime Minister. He served under her as Cabinet Office Minister and was previously Justice Secretary as well. And he's with us this morning. Sir David, good morning. Good morning, Callum. Uh, just a reaction, first of all, reflection from you on Theresa May's announcement this morning. I mean, it'd be hypocritical for, 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 for me to say, oh, oh I'm, I'm, I'm sorry she's leaving, because I took the same decision as she did five years ago. Um, but she'll be a loss to the House of Commons. I'm sure that Theresa still got the energy and the commitment to continue to play a part in public life. I, I rather expect it'll be in some of the particular causes like ending modern slavery that she's devoted so much of her energies uh, to while she's been in government. But she's she's been somebody who, in my experience, has been more, I find her politics more rooted in a genuine ethic of public service than many, many others that I have worked with over the years. Um, Theresa has a very deep Christian faith. And from that um, Christianity comes her sense of public duty and all the time that I was working with her in cabinet whether you agreed or whether you disagreed with her on a particular issue you couldn't be in any doubt that she was trying to take the decision that in her mind she thought was best for the country and in line with her ethical approach to how she saw public service. Mm. Uh, can you help us, David? Oh, sorry to interrupt. I was just going to say, can you help us understand, I suppose, the relationship between, um, uh, sort of for Theresa May, between being an MP that you say, you know, so devoted to public service, how much being an MP influenced her work as PM, if you like? How, how do those two things kind of work? Oh, it, it, the, the, she's, she's one of those pe people who um, never forgot that it was a privilege to have been elected, even when she was prime minister, she would often spend um, a, a Sunday afternoon uh, on the doorsteps in her Maidenhead constituency in Berkshire, knocking on doors of people just um, going down the street, not just picking out Conservative Party supporters, but anybody she talked to. While she was prime minister, she um, still insisted on doing her duty uh, to as, as a marshal in the annual 10 kilometre run in Maidenhead for charity. Um, Christmas Day, because she and Philip don't have um, ch children of their own, um, they they would volunteer and help prepare and serve Christmas lunch uh, run by the local church for, for people who were on their own and isolated over Christmas. So that was going on all the time. And I think in, in Maidenhead, in her patch, she, she was and still is hugely respected and admired. There's her commitment to the constituency, her sense of the privilege of having been sent by her fellow citizens to serve them and represent them at Westminster, remain with her all the way through. And that, that sort of animated her approach to um, being Home Secretary, being, being uh, Prime Minister, and she held those great political offices. She always knew that they should not be taken for granted or regarded as things to which she was somehow entitled. Yeah. Uh, notable, isn't it, that she... So she was Prime Minister from 2016 to 2019 um, uh, and then sat as a backbencher. So there's been, you know, a pretty solid five years of being a backbencher post-PM, if you like. And I, I think that's quite an interesting part of all of this. But I do wonder, uh, Sir David, whether her departure now should be read into as something of a reflection on the state of the Conservative Party. She's got a majority of 18,846. You know, one would consider that she'd probably hold on to that should she stand in the next general election i just wonder if this is something something of a of an indication of her own feelings on the conservative party i i mean there's, I, there's no doubt that she um was was, was not exactly a a close ally or great admirer of, of boris johnson mm. um but i think that you know, her relationship with rishi sunak i think is a a a, a perfectly good one um and as you say she's played a uh, a really constructive and active role as a very senior backbencher, former PM who's still there operating in Parliament. Um, but I think that, I mean, it's for her to say, but I think the decision to stand down uh, is not too surprising that she has been a Member of Parliament since 1997. That's a good long 
stint. And I remember going through this process last time round that in my mind that you you have to think not just am I up for this job for another 12 months, two years, but am I going to commit myself to a further five years in office mm. uh, and serving constituents and with what that does to your your routine and the inability to do some of the other things that you, you'd be interested in doing and enjoy doing in your life while you've still got health and energy to do those things. So I, I suspect that she and Philip, her husband, will have, will have thought this through at considerable length. It won't have been an easy decision because her link with Maidenhead in particular is very, very strong. But I think it's much more about you know, people deciding a particular time in their life, they don't have a particular length of service in the Commons. Um, time to move on, let fresh blood in, somebody else have a chance, rather than um, you know, a particular commentary, commentary by her part on the Conservative Party. I mean, Theresa is an absolutely you know, died in the wool conservative and, and, and she, you know, she was party chairman for a while. Um, she has been a councillor before she got into parliament. She's somebody who's never lost that um, feeling of the importance of, of people in Westminster continuing to have connections with ordinary constituents and also with their party members and supporters in their local area. Mm. Uh, there is an interesting thing to, to to sort of observe just from our listeners, uh, Sir David, as well, some of them who are getting in touch, certainly, who, while we reflect on Theresa May's parliamentary career, uh, there is also a kind of intertwining of, of her prime ministerial decision making. And indeed, as when she held other uh, offices of state, whether that is Home Secretary or whatever, um, Matt says... Uh, could you ask about uh, how her Christian faith played a part in creating the hostile environment and the Windrush scandal? You know, these are things that Theresa May will be remembered for as well during her time in politics. Well, I think Windrush, is, of course, you, you have to remember, mm. went back long before her time as Home Secretary and, and you know, it, it uh, was carrying on. We subsequently found out under governments of, of both parties. So I think the you could argue about... The, whether at what point ministers should have realised that something was going wrong with decision taking further down. But once that was brought to her attention um, as prime minister, you know, she did get a grip on, on this and mm. set up the compensation redress scheme. I think that um, in terms of the immigration question more broadly, um, I think that what Theresa was reflecting was a genuine concern that she picked up talking to people on, on, on the doorsteps in her patch about immigration and the sense of uh, people worrying that the well while you, you were right to welcome people who came here lawfully and to help people to integrate take opportunities of, of, of living working this this country yeah. that unlawful entry uh, was a was an issue and so was I mean, there was an issue also about the numbers that any society can uh, integrate and welcome at any one time. I, that is a dilemma that I think almost every European country is wrestling with at the moment. It's not just Britain. You talk to leaders in Sweden or Norway or Germany, uh, the Netherlands, and, and they're going through these same dilemmas that people who've immigrated here uh, to those other countries have enriched our societies and our culture in numerous ways. They've contributed hugely to our economy and public services. But there are also, you know, social challenges that come when you, you try to welcome and integrate a very large number of people within a very short space of time and provide properly for them. And how do you accommodate the the right of people to have respect for their traditions, their religious faiths, their way of, way of life, and at the same time an established set of um, ways of doing things and sort of cultural assumptions that there are here and how do you reconcile yeah. those and those are genuinely difficult political political uh, dilemmas so i think i think the, the, the Theresa in trying to face up to those was doing so the same way that leaders you know, throughout the rest of democratic europe have been trying to do really interesting uh, so david thank you very much thanks for joining us to reflect on some breaking news this morning really appreciate that um, Thank you. Good to see you. And you. Uh, that's Sir David Liddington, who was effectively Theresa May's Deputy Prime Minister. He was Cabinet Office Minister. Uh, reflecting on the news breaking this morning, then, that Theresa May will be standing down as an MP come the next election. Times Radio's Adam Bolton joins us. Hi, Adam.
Good morning. I enjoy, I enjoyed Mr. Davis's almost default reaction to say, "Well, this is something that happens on all parties," you know. And it's like, "Well, hang on a second. <laughs> you know, it's a kind of an odd defence to jump to. I mean, he's got a point. There are a, 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 a large number of um, MPs standing down. Um, is there anything to read into Theresa May's timing in all of this?" Yes, I think there is. First of all, it's International Women's Day, and Theresa May has always. Uh, very much uh, been someone who's uh, stood up for women's rights. And I think she's probably making a point resigning today, particularly since in her resignation letter, she says because of her work in modern slavery and human trafficking, uh, she feels she won't be able to concentrate if she stayed on uh, on being an MP and serving her constituents. So she's trying to make that point. Also, I think, you know, frankly, we're talking about a woman uh, who's uh, been a dedicated politician for 27 years, majority uh, of 18,000. Uh, most people would expect had she stood again, she would have been re-elected. Uh, therefore, to go now, uh, she's basically saying, uh, I don't fancy uh, five years with the Conservatives uh, on the back benches uh, in, in opposition on the basis of where opinion polls are. And, you know, there are now nearly 100 uh, MPs who said they're not going to fight the next election. Two thirds of them are Conservatives. And I think that tells its own tale about their expectations of how they think they're going to do in the general election. There's an interesting thing on a day like today, Adam, where, you know, just looking at the text that we're getting from our listeners, lots of them, of course, are considering Theresa May's record as Prime Minister, and that is valid. You know, this is her parliamentary career coming to an end. Is there a... Risk is probably not the right word. Is there a, a tendency at a time like this to uh, almost bask in some sort of retrospective glow? How easy is it to judge the parliamentary career of somebody like Theresa May objectively when on announcing her departure? Well, of course, people have their own partisan views, which affect whether they uh, like or don't like a particular politician. And when someone has been prime minister, they have to stand by their record. And uh, uh, we can repeat that old cliche of Enoch Powell's that all political careers end in failure. Uh, Theresa May was forced out by her own party, uh, largely over the question of uh, getting Brexit done or not getting Brexit done. Uh, she'd earlier uh, led the party into a general election in 2017 when unexpectedly uh, the Conservatives went backwards. Uh, now, that was, interestingly, on the question of uh, the so-called death tax, the idea of finding some way to pay for social care for people in old age. So you can argue that she was trying to grasp a nettle, uh, but that it stung her very badly because people didn't like uh, that idea of uh, having capped payments uh, for their, their older years. Uh, so, you know, she's been quite a brave politician in some ways. Remember when she was party chairman, uh, she warned the party that it was known as the nasty party. Uh, but uh, on balance, she's not been that successful. And she certainly was a fairly hard line Home Secretary. Although, again, interestingly, I think it's pretty clear that she has quite strong reservations about the Rwanda uh, policy and, and is not particularly uh, in sympathy, in spite of uh, what David Lillington was saying to you early on about the drift to the right uh, of the Conservative Party uh, under Boris Johnson, Liz Truss and now uh, Rishi Sunak. Uh, Adam, thanks very much. It's uh, always really good to speak to you. Thanks for joining us.